Hi everybody, this is Dear Mama Sal and we are live on a Friday afternoon. Uh, a very warm welcome to you all. If you are ghosting, we always welcome people who want to just watch. Excuse me, allergies are playing up. Um, and feel free to do that. By the way, if there's a subject that you'd like us to talk about, please make sure that you let us know. Um, Today, we're going to be talking a case study, around a case study that happened. Some of you might have been um, on the air when Emma was talking to us about some problems that she was having. And I want to talk through the whole of that scenario and give you the follow-up because it's really interesting. Hi, Jody, and hi to Emma. <laughs> this is your story, Em, so you'll be able to correct me if I say anything that's not quite correct. I'm hoping I got it all right. Um, the, the reason that I asked Emma, and by the way, she did give permission for me to do this, and uh, the reason that I asked her to let me tell the story is because, hi, Kerry, because it really is a wonderful story about correcting and recorrecting, and, you know, it's about judgments, and it's about self-talk, and it's about a little bit about everything, and I thought because of that, uh, it's a wonderful story to tell so that people can hopefully learn a little bit from it. So for those of you who were not on the broadcast, it feels like a month ago, but I'm certain it wasn't. I've got a feeling it was only a week ago. Em, when, when did we originally start this? Was it two weeks ago or a week ago? I know it was on a Friday. Anyway, let me continue while Em lets me know on that one. Um, but the, the whole thing was that uh, em, Emily came on Emma, rather, came on the chat to talk about some stress that she was going under. It was two weeks. Okay, thank you. Um, she was under a lot of stress, not just some. It was a lot of stress. I think that would be putting it pretty plainly. And the reason that she was having a lot of stress was because she had an upcoming physics exam and she had downloaded some test papers yeah, I've got a feeling it was only one. <laughs> she had downloaded some test papers, you know, to practice with. And when she saw them, reality hit home. Uh, you So you understand that the, the, the practice paper just triggered her completely and made her realize she was not suitably prepared um, to take this physics exam. So the interesting part about this was that she intelligently, in my view, um, came to the broadcast and talked about it. You see, when you talk about something that's stressing you out, you get a chance for options, you get a chance to hear what your stress is about, and you get a chance to rethink things. And so, first of all, a big round of applause to Emma for coming and talking about it, even though it probably was a little bit embarrassing for her. She was in overwhelm. Uh, I think I'm correct in saying, Emma, that you were feeling a bit like a loser. And quite honestly, at some level, she was out of control. And that's not an easy place to be in and, and come for help, quite honestly. <laughs> you know, it's a big hug to you because we would not have been able to do this together had you not told the truth on this. So I really want to thank her for that. So what we did is we discussed it during the broadcast, and I thank all of you who were there because we were able to give her some possible solutions. Now, one of the things that I really want everybody to know, when you're trying to help somebody, you know, if you can give them options and let them make the decision, that that works really well. I try very hard not to tell people what to do because I don't know what they should do because I'm not sitting in their chair. They are. And so we gave her a couple of options about what she might be able to do. And one of them was to, you know, just go ahead and take the exam, obviously. The second one, I mean, you know, and when I say that, take the exam knowing that she probably wouldn't pass it. Um. The other possibility was to talk to her advisor and explain that she did not feel 
uh, ready to take the exam. She didn't feel that she was, you know, had studied enough or, or understood enough rather to be able to take the exam and that she needed help and see if the um, advisor could, you know, either help her or give her somebody that would be able to help her. Well, the interesting thing was that Emma decided on the second route. She decided not to sit the exam. And I think it's fair to say, Emma, that you instantly felt the relief of that, right? Oh, the other thing we did check out, just so that you all know, we did check out if she didn't sit the exam, was it pass and fail forever or could she reset it and resit it at another time? And she had said she was had the ability to reset it in May. So to resit in May meant that it gave her that much of a little gap to, to sort of get her ducks in a row. Anyway, so what she did um, was she decided not to take the exam. And then we double checked to make sure that she felt comfortable with that and, and you know, was there anything else that we could give her support on? And she said, no, she realized now that's what she needed to do. So I thought that was amazing that she did it. So you, what did Emma have to let go of in order to let go of the stress? Do you understand something had to give for her to let go of the stress? Now, maybe Emma can tell us, but I want you guys to think about this because you do the same thing as Emma, I'm pretty sure, on a fairly regular basis if you're human. And the whole trick about emotional intelligence that we're talking about is not that you don't ever get overwhelmed. It's how long do you stay there? See, that is the trick. The trick is not that you get overwhelmed. I've got another couple of case studies that I'm going to talk about this evening, um, because this is all about thinking, thinking smart helps you move on. And sometimes you need to talk to other people to get the input you need. Well, the thing was that Emma decided to delay the exam. And I know Emma enough to know that that probably had um, an effect on her. So what I decided to do was actually check back with her in a couple of days after that to see how she was doing and make sure she wasn't beating up on herself you know, for, for deciding not to take the exam. And quite the opposite. She was actually really excited, which I thought was awesome, because not only had she delayed the sitting of the exam, but she also had found herself a study buddy. Yay. So that was wonderful. Now, this is where the emotional roller coaster continues because you understand she was under high stress, then she dropped the stress, and now she's happy. And one of the things I was talking to um, some other people about this week was the fact that, you know, your happy stress actually is equally damaging to the body as your worry stress. I don't know if you, you guys are aware of that. That when you're super happy, it, it also has effect on your body. You know, if you're super stressed, it has an effect, but so does super happy. But anyway, the good news was she was overjoyed with herself because she'd managed to find herself a pretty darn smart <laughs> study buddy. And that would be putting it mildly. So I was obviously very happy to hear that for her. And Then the next bit of conversation I had from Emma was that she was upset. And she wasn't a little bit upset. She was very upset. So here we go with the roller coaster. So she was really happy. And now suddenly she's back into being upset. And well done, Emma, <laughs> again, because she talked about it. She didn't stay in it right, which is emotionally unintelligent, she actually talked to me about it, which meant that her brain could process it and, and move on, hopefully. So she told me the truth. And the truth was that she was angry because her study buddy was gloating about what great scores she got. 
Now, do any of you relate to this? That she found herself the study buddy, and now suddenly the study buddy turns out to be somebody that's gloating about the fact that they got you know, really good marks. Really good marks. And Emma had done the same test that the study buddy had, and Emma had only just passed. I, you know, I hesitate to say squeaked through, but from the way that Emma said it, that was my sense of it, that she just passed and, and the study buddy did the same test and, and got really, really good marks. And Emma was upset about that, uh, that she was gloating about her marks. Now, part of me totally understood it. <laughs> you know, part of me has been there, done that, Em. <laughs> you know, I can remember when I, I sat for my radio hammock, you know, license. You know, I, I, I failed it by this much. Um, <laughs> you know, so I, I, I worked really, really hard for six months and then I passed it by this much. Um, you know, but there were people, you know, around me that never did pass it. And there were other people that got really good scores. But you see... The thing was that Emma said to me, she talked, good good for Emma, she talked to the study buddy and said, hey, I need to tell you that this gloating about your brilliant scores is actually upsetting me. So I'd appreciate it if you didn't do that, which is addressing her issue. By the way, who's got the issue? Just so that everybody's really clear. Um. Is it the the study buddy? Hi, Linda. Um, is it the study buddy who is boasting about her scores, or is it Emma who doesn't want to hear about the scores? Yeah, I, you know, Jody's saying she can totally ups understand the upset as well. Yeah, I, I, you know, something when I was reading about it, I, I, I just had to chuckle because I went, yeah, I've been there and done that. Yeah, don't, don't tell me how well you did. I really don't want to know <laughs> because I only just squeaked through. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? It was just like, I totally got it. Um, however, she she talked to the, to the, how many of you would have had the guts to actually tell that person, this is upsetting me, so just be aware? Um. You know, because that, that takes courage to actually tell somebody, but it got worse. <laughs> I can take a deep breath here. Because it got worse for poor Emma, because the next thing is they did another test together, and this time she got distinction, which is, you know, like the very top that you can get. <laughs> and guess the study buddy's busy telling Emma, guess what? I got distinction. And now Emma isn't just angry. She is livid. I told you, you know, in her mind, she's going, I told you not to tell me. I didn't want to have this happen. So Emma, again, big round of applause, wrote to me and told me the second part of the story. Now, can you all feel at some level what Emma was feeling? She didn't want to feel less than, and so therefore she didn't want to hear the other person's marks. But also, she had told her new friend, and by the way, she was quite excited she'd found this new friend. Um, she had told this new friend not to discuss it if she got really good scores because it upset her. Now, to me, that was really interesting. Yeah, Jody's saying she's feeling very protective of Emma. <laughs> very protective indeed, yeah, because Jody is our mother hen. Um, so... All right, as long as you can all feel Emma's side of it. So she said to me, Sal, what do I do? And, you know, I, I can't tell Emma what to do, but I did want to help Emma change her thinking. All right, because if I could get her to change her thinking, you see, I know from the bottom of my heart what Emma wants, I believe. I, actually, I don't know. But I'm pretty sure that Emma wants to pass the exam. That's what came to me when, when I read all of this. You know, what Emma wants is to pass the exam. So my question to myself was, 
What does Emma need to do to pass the exam? And so I said to her, <laughs> all you really need to do is to bury your ego for a second and learn everything you possibly can from this brilliant study buddy that you passed. Um, because you did a really great job. You, you didn't just do everything. What you did was you got yourself an expert in the subject, and that means that they'll be able to teach you a lot of the tricks of the trade. So if you can let go of the fact that she's smarter than you are <laughs> and concentrate on the fact that you can learn everything you need to know from her and pass your exam, <laughs> you know what I mean? This is like, well done. I, I'm so proud of you for finding this human being. And so I am delighted to say, <laughs> with the tears running out of my eyes as I speak, but I am delighted to say that Emma got it. <laughs> it was just like, <laughs> hello. <laughs> you were smart enough to, to delay the exam. You were smart enough to find yourself a, a study buddy that can help you pass. Um. Duh, the fact that she's brighter than you is a good thing, not a bad thing. So, okay, now it's not allergies. Now it's just me getting emotional. Um, but I realized in, in saying this to her that Emma could go either way. She could either think I was no longer on her side, which was not true, or she could see that reality and move on. So, I'm delighted to say that she got it. <laughs> and she went, right. <laughs> and that made my day, obviously. <laughs> but I did give her the option, or she or or you know, she could just you know let go of the friend that didn't do what she wanted her to. You see, the, the real issue on the second one was that she couldn't control the the study buddy's excitement about getting really good marks. You know, she couldn't handle it. <laughs> but then she got smart. See, then she became emotionally intelligent when she realized this was a good thing. <laughs> Hang on, let me rethink this one. This actually is a good thing if I choose to see it that way. And so, Emma, I want to give you 10 out of 10 because what you did was so right on so many different levels, in my view, in terms of emotional intelligence. First of all, you were really honest with yourself, even though it was possibly a little bit embarrassing. You talked about the initial problem and therefore got some op new options. You then got really excited because you found yourself the perfect buddy. Then you went through the roller coaster of she's smarter than I am, but really much smarter and it's pissing me off, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Oh, how cute is that? And Emma's saying, Sal, I think I got a distinction in my emotional intelligence life exam. <laughs> but you understand, that's why it's there. Because again, the moment that you could see it from the other side, Emma, um, did it change your reality? You see, you were getting angry at the other person because they got good scores um, really isn't what it's about. And by the way, asking her to keep quiet about her good scores was also denying her the pleasure of finding out how smart she was. I was pretty sure, although I've never met this person, that they are somebody that uh, strives for excellence. I don't know why, it sort of reminded me, happy birthday to Jenny Jenjen, sort of reminded me of Jenny Jenjen, you know, who got really good marks on things, but yet was able to help other people along this, along their way. And so it was wonderful. So here are the lessons that I wanted to share with everybody. Number one, would you agree that when you hear options, you know, when you think you're stuck, but you can hear that you've got options, it helps to calm you down. You see, what Emma did in the first case was when she decided, ah, that is so cute. And uh, Emma's just saying, yes, study buddy got distinction today and again yelled from the rooftops. I got a purse again. 
But instead of going into myself, I gave her a hug and told her I was so proud of her. Emotionally brilliant. Well done, Emma, because how keen is she going to be to help you get through your exam? Thank you.